Met Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Next week, we begin our preparations for Christmas with the season of Advent. And today is Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of our Christian liturgical year. And on this day, we pause and we remember that though so much has been said over the year, we on this day affirm our creedal faith of the church and Anglican formularies, and we reaffirm our individual faith, which honestly, from time to time, doubts. As humans and God's people have been doubting forever, actually, seeking other lords to help with harvests and prosperity, other demigods and lesser demons to help with those trials that we face. But today, all of us today, we proclaim there is but one ruler, one Lord, and one God. We make clear the church's faith that Jesus Christ is the the image of the invisible God. And here I'm pulling from Paul's letter to the Colossians, this hymn that Christ existed before all creation and all creation comes to be through Christ. In him all things in heaven and earth were created, the things visible and things invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through Christ and for Christ, including us. We affirm that we are made for God and God's purposes. Christ, we believe, is the head of the body of the people of the church forever and ever. Christ is the firstborn of the dead, we proclaim, which allows us, when we die, to go to the grave singing hallelujah instead of grief that life is ended, for death no longer has a sting, nor has the last word. In Christ, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through Christ, all things are reconciled to God, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace, the hymn sings through the blood of his cross. These are the basics of the first Christian faith. Paul has pulled a hymn that would have been sung by the people and placed it in this letter to Colossians to remind them, not of a creedal faith because that didn't exist yet, but that this hymn included in Paul's letter uh, sings and proclaims the basic faith of the followers of Jesus. And I want to say I believe every word, no fingers crossed. Paul uses the hymn to teach his first readers and us that the nature of our inheritance as people of God through Christ is one that happens by grace and grace alone, that Jesus is the very image of an invisible God through whom all creation was made, yes, but it also gives us grace and righteousness, rescuing us from our mortal flesh, says Paul. Thus we have become, you and I and everyone with us, members of a great family that numbers the stars, that will be like angels, the scripture says, and early theologians promise. We do not earn this, of course, but instead we practice it in our bodies and in our lives. Now, This is what we would say is living into our true nature, as Martin Luther called it, simil justice et peccato. We are both sinners and judged righteous at the same time. We are neither one or the other, but both in the same. 
And so we might ask, well, what does this mean? If we proclaim Christ as Lord, then what are we supposed to do with that? Is today just today a statement of faith? No, that faith is to lead us into action. Now, what is the action that we believe we are called to do? Bound by our mortal bodies, sinners, meaning that we're going to fail from time to time. We are meant to do the work of Christ, releasing his goodness into the world. Now, the first thing that we must do is what we're doing today, the proclamation of Christ as Lord, stating clearly that we are not lords, but that our life, our life is bound up in Christ. Money is not the Lord of us. The toys we collect, the relationships, nothing else but Christ. We're to worship God, not just come here for our own needs, as our Eucharistic prayer tells us. This is to say in the book of Hebrews is the offering and proclamation of fruit of our lips, if you will. It is to give God the very first words, the beginning of the day, and on Sunday, and at the end, It is to proclaim Christ here in this place and out in the world on a regular basis. The second is to create in the world acts that reflect the goodness of God and God's loving nature, Uh, welcoming strangers, forgiving others, falling in love, wedding, in our sharing of money and time, suggests theologian Tony Baker. We make goodness happen in the world and that goodness lasts as gemstones in heaven is an icon of the god who is good and the god who is love when we act in goodness as it says in the book of hebrews we are to share what we have and do good works these are the sacrifices that are pleasing to god just as proclamation and affirmation of god and god's lordship last eternally so do our actions participate in worship and in the world participate in the life to come as both sinner and righteous person. In this, we are not given an excuse. This is our work, even though we will sin and not accomplish it. But we are entrusted we are entrusted with the responsibility of the gift of righteousness, which begins with a faith that proclaims that Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.